Yo, yo, and hello, my name is Lydia, and on today's episode of my 25 pound yo-yo, we will be talking about metabolism. And what specifically is about it that is making me fat? Or what exactly have I done by dieting that's broken it? And is there anything I can do to make it work faster? There's a lot to unpack here. So let's watch this next clip and then we'll come back and discuss. Your metabolism is how your body breaks down food and turns it into energy. Your BMR is your basal metabolic rate. It is the rate at which you burn calories simply by existing. Your BMR determines how many calories you need to consume in a day to live without factoring in any activity. These are also known as coma calories. No, this does not refer to the calories you ate to induce that food coma last Thanksgiving. It's the number of calories you need to survive if you were lying in bed all day in a coma. A person's age, sex, genetics, hormones, and body composition are all contributors to their BMR. But the biggest factor in determining their metabolism is their body mass. Simply stated, the bigger you are, the more calories you need. This means that someone who weighs 250 pounds needs far more calories than someone who is 150 pounds. This is where the slowed down metabolism misinformation starts to get propagated. If you are 250 pounds and need 2,125 calories a day to maintain your weight and you lose 50 pounds, you will only need 1,898 calories a day to maintain your 200 pound body. This is not a consequence of dieting. It is the science of how energy works. Your body needs a certain number of calories to live. If you eat above that amount, the extra gets stored as fat. If you want to continue to stay at a larger size, you need to eat enough calories to sustain it, enough to support the extra fat. If you eat less and lose weight, your smaller body will require less calories. If you take someone who is 150 pounds and has always been 150 pounds, they will require roughly the same amount of calories per day as someone who was 200 pounds and then dieted down to 150 pounds. Yes, the dieters' metabolism dropped, but that's because they are supporting less weight now. They require no less energy than the person that has been 150 pounds all along. Yes, there are other things that contribute to your metabolism that you can't control, such as your genetics and hormones. But those items make a significantly smaller difference than you think. And most of the time, those other things contribute by making you want to eat more and move less. They don't actually cause weight gain on their own. I've heard the argument countless times that we all know someone that can eat whatever they want and not gain weight. So why is it so hard to believe that people exist that are fat that don't eat a lot? Well, that's because it really isn't true. First of all, the so-called people that eat whatever they want, well, that's relative. A thin person usually wants to eat a heck of a lot less than a fat person. So, from their perspective, yes, yes they do eat whatever they want to stay full. Also, some people overindulge once in a while, but don't eat a lot the rest of the time. Seeing a thin person pack away a 3,000 calorie meal in one city may look shocking, but what did they eat the rest of the week? I'd bet they didn't eat that much every day or even every week. You can't base what a person eats every day off of a snapshot. For the most part, your metabolism functions to meet your current body's needs. If you are big, you need more energy to stay big, and if you are small, you need less energy to stay small. There are a few hacks you can do though. Number one, eat low calorie dense foods. Foods that are low in calories but high in volume, so that you can feel full on less energy. Number two, do resistance training to increase muscle mass. The more muscle mass you have, the higher your resting metabolic rate is and the more calories you need just to survive. And number three, get daily cardio activity. Cardio will not only help you burn excess energy, but also increase the rate in which you are burning energy after the exercise is over. No, these are not quick fixes, but they can be helpful. Your metabolism is based off of science. And even though you might not like it, you can't break the rules of thermodynamics. The first thing I'd like to talk about is what exactly your metabolism is. Well, 
It is how your body breaks down food and turns it into energy. It is scientific. It doesn't discriminate. Food has units of energy known as calories. Some foods have higher calories than others. Your body needs so many calories to survive. The number of calories you need depends a lot on things such as your age, sex, activity level, but the biggest contributor to your caloric needs is your body mass. So if you weigh more, you need more calories to sustain that weight. And if you are small, thus don't weigh very much, you need fewer calories to sustain that lower weight. The next thing I want to address is how dieting lowers your metabolism because um, it, it doesn't. After you lose weight, your metabolism will adjust to meet the needs of your smaller body. If you revert to eating the way that you did before you lost weight, well, you will gain the weight back. It's not your metabolism that is broken. Your metabolism adjusted to support the smaller you. If you gain weight, it will adjust to support bigger you. It, it's just how it works. If you want to be and stay smaller, you need to eat the amount of calories that support that smaller body. Next, I'd like to discuss the other things that can affect one's metabolism. Things like genetics, hormones, medications, environment, and sleep. These things all have a role, but I think that many people don't understand the role that they play they don't actually magically make people fat. They influence your behaviors that control how much you eat and move. A hormone imbalance does not make you gain weight. It makes you crave sugar, which is high in calories, which when you consume too much of, you gain weight. Your family history of obesity likely contributes to your weight, but that's due to a lifetime of bad eating and exercise habits. People like to spout the causes all the time, but rarely are they honest about that they are the cause of the cause. They are not the reason that they are obese. They are the reason why they overeat or the reason that they don't exercise. They don't cause obesity on their own. Next, I'd like to address the myth that some skinny people can eat a lot without getting fat. So why can't there be fat people that don't eat a lot? This is a favorite to me. It's a favorite because it is just not true. I know plenty of skinny people that can eat a lot, but if you actually watch them over a week, they don't eat a lot. They may break the bank on Friday night with you, but the rest of the week, they're eating a whole lot less. Also, notice what they actually eat when they're at a restaurant. Yes, my skinny friend ordered the nachos to start, a pasta for her main, and the chocolate cheesecake for dessert. But she didn't finish any of it. Whereas my plate, my plate was completely clean. <laughs> but if you asked her, she'd say, oh yeah, I, I ate whatever I wanted. Uh, she just happened to want to eat half of what she was served. So unless you observe a person's eating habits day after day, you really don't know how much they eat to stay thin. Fat people, unless there is a rare health problem at play, are that way because they eat too many calories. Many of them have no clue how many calories they are supposed to be eating. So they think that their size is unfair. I remember having a friend in high school that told me that she just didn't understand why she was fat. She had a bottle of Coke and a bag of chips for her lunch, and that was all. And she said that she never ate big things, big things like a sandwich, yet she was overweight and it wasn't fair. The problem was that she just didn't understand calories. The science doesn't lie. If you are fat, it's because you eat too many calories more than what your body needs. And the extra is stored as fat. I didn't invent thermodynamics. It's just the way it is. Lastly, I'd like to briefly talk about what we can do to hack our metabolisms. You want to maintain a slim body, but still want to eat enough to feel full. Well, there are a few things you can do. You can eat low calorie dense foods, foods that have a lot of water that can keep you satiated without a lot of calories. Uh, foods like fruits and veggies, lean proteins like chicken breast, uh, snacks like popcorn, and drinks like diet sodas. You can build muscle by doing resistance training. The more muscle you have, the higher your resting metabolism is, and thus the more you can eat. 
And you can add daily cardio to your day, which is not just good for your heart, but it's good at burning extra calories, not only during, but after your exercise is over too. There is a lot of bad information out there about metabolism. Whenever I see a TikTok or Instagram post that tells these lies, I get really angry. I know it seems unfair, but science wasn't meant to be inclusive. No, you can't eat whatever you want and be thin. No, you are not fat because of your, your hormones are out of balance. If your hormones are a factor, they are a factor of the factor, meaning they're making you eat more, which is what is making you fat. We could spend forever looking for other causes and reasons to our body weights. But if we are ready for the truth, it's really quite simple. Calories in must equal calories out to maintain our body mass. But alas, this is my 25 pound yo-yo and not thermodynamics for beginners. So until next time, yo-yo and let's go.